Hey guys, so in our first lesson, uh, we learned how to simplify radical expressions. Today we're going to multiply and divide them. So for objectives, um, how can we apply our knowledge of simplifying radicals to multiplying and dividing? So we're going to both multiply and divide radicals, and then we're going to simplify radical expressions um, both before and after. Um, either way is fine, as long as we have the simplest form as our answer. And also we're going to rationalize the denominator of expressions by multiplying to create a perfect root. Alright, so let's get started. Can you simplify the product of the rational expression, radical expression and explain? So here I have the cubed root of 6 times the square root of 2. Can we take the cubed root of 6? No. Can we take the square root of 2? No. So we have two numbers that we can't simplify anymore that we're multiplying together. And if you look, this one has a 3, and this one is understood to have a 2. So they have different indexes, so we cannot combine them. What about this? The cubed root of negative 4 times the cubed root of 2. Well, these both have the same index, so we're going to multiply them together. Negative 4 times 2, and that is the cubed root of negative 8. Now, can we take the cubed root of negative 8? Is there a number times itself 3 times that makes negative 8? Yes. So our answer is negative 2. So there's the multiplying and the simplifying all together in one. Isn't it fantastic? Okay, why don't you go ahead and think about these for a second. The first one, the fourth root of 7 times the fifth root of 7. We can't simplify either one of those, and they have different indexes, so we cannot multiply them. The second one is the fifth root of negative 5 and the fifth root of negative 2. They're both fifth roots, so we can multiply negative 5 times negative 2. That's 10. Um, can we simplify the fifth root of 10? No, so that's our answer, fifth root of 10. All right, for this one, we're going to try and simplify this. This is where things um, might get a little bit dicey, but just follow along, pay attention. All right, so the first thing we need to do is simplify this um, 54. Is there a number times itself three times that's a multiple of 54? So I'm going to go ahead and write my cubes up here. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. Are any of these numbers a multiple of 54? Well, yes. 27 times 2 would make 54. So I'm going to rewrite this as 27 times 2, and then x to the fifth. So let's rewrite this 27 so that it's the power, 3 cubed. The cubed root of 3 cubed times 2. And then is there a way to make x to the fifth um, have a 3? Well, yes. If we have x cubed times x squared, that's x to the fifth, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as x cubed times x squared. Now I'm going to take these two cubes and I'm going to write them in a separate root because what do um, roots and powers do? Well, they're the opposite. Okay, and then I have cubed root of 2x squared. So what is the cubed root of 3 cubed? Well, that's just 3. And the cubed root of x cubed is x. And then I have cube root of 2x squared left. Now we have to ask ourselves, do we need to use absolute values? Um, so we ended with x is positive, or x is um, an odd number, so we can use positive or, or negative numbers. And we look at our root, our root is 3. Can we have negatives in an odd number root? Yes, so we don't need to use absolute values. All right, I want you to go ahead and try this one. Look for a perfect cube that's in 128, and then simplify your x to the seventh. If you haven't paused your video, pause it now. You have to, you know, actually try and stuff. All right, so um, 128 is 64 times 2. 64 times 2. And 64 is 4 cubed. So I have 4 cubed times 2 times x to, well, since we have x to the 7th, how many times can we make 3s? Well, 
if I have x to the 6, that's 2 x to the 3s and another x. So I'm going to write x2 cubed x. So my two cubes, I take the cube root of those. So I have 4x squared, and I have cube root of 2x left. So for absolute values, um, I would get a positive answer every time, so I don't need to worry about absolute values. Okay? All right. Okay, so here's where the actual multiplying comes in. Um, so we have two options. We can either multiply first and then simplify, or we can simplify, then multiply, then simplify again. So either way, you're going to be doing some simplifying. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply them out first. So 72 times 10 is 720. And then I have x to the fourth and y to the fifth. And since there's no number in our root, we're going to assume that it's a square root. So we're looking for um, numbers that are perfect squares. All right, so I just did some quick math, and I found that 720 is 144 times 5. 144 is 12 squared. So we're going to rewrite this as 12 squared times 5, um, x squared squared, y squared squared, and y to account for all our x's and all our y's. But we put them so that we have powers so that we can easily simplify. So I'm going to take out 12 x squared y squared and I'm left with 5y inside. Now do we need to lose, use absolute values? Well x squared and y squared are always going to be positive numbers so we should be good. There we go, 12 x squared y squared, square root 5y. Okay, I want you to go ahead and try this one. See if you can simplify this. All right, so I went ahead and multiplied. I got 1575 x to the 6th, y to the 7th. I found that 1575 is 225 times 7, and 225 is 15 squared. So I have 15 squared times 7, so there's the number. And then for the x to the 6th, because um, I'm looking for squared, so x cubed squared, I have two sets of x cubes, or three sets of x squared, however you want to look at it. Uh, same for y, the smallest number that it goes into is y to the sixth, and I have one left over, so I have this one out here. So I take the square root of all of the ones that I have powers of two, so 15 x cubed y cubed. And then I have 7 and a y left over, so they'll stay inside. Now, since my root is a, an even number, I cannot have odd numbers that I take out. So I have to put absolute values around here because odd exponents can give me negative numbers. So I have to use absolute values this time. All right, and then when we divide radicals, same rules apply. They have to have the same indexes. And then we just divide like normal. So we can put these underneath the same radical. Um, you can write it as one big one. So 18 divided by 2 is 9. And x to the fifth divided by x cubed is 9x squared. Well, the square root of 9x squared is 3x. Um, and then you just have to put absolute values around your x because that's an odd number and our root is an even number. So dividing is pretty simple. All right, with this one, the cube root 162y to the fifth divided by the cube root of 3y squared. I'm going to take again and write these all underneath the same root, 162y to the fifth over 3y squared. And then I take 162 and I divide it by 3, and I get the cube root of 54, and then y to the fifth divided by y squared is y cubed. So the cube root of 54... Um, we already talked about this one today, and we said it was 27 times 2. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this as the cubed root of 3 cubed times 2, y cubed. And I can take the cubed root of the cubed ones, so I get 3y cubed root of 2. Do we need to use absolute values? Our root is 3, so we can have negative numbers. It's fine. Leave it just like that.
All right, there's another one. Um, go ahead and do that really quick. This one's super easy. You get the square root of 25x squared, so that's 5x. Absolute value is around the x because we need it to be positive. And the last one here I have is rationalizing the denominator. So we need to simplify the cube root of 5x squared or 12y squared z. Now we don't like to have cubed roots in the denominator. So we want to get rid of those cubed roots. So what we need to do is we need to um, make each one in the denominator a perfect cube. So let's think about 12. What is 12? Um, 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 squared. So we have 2 squared times 3. Well, what we want is to have each one of those be a cube so that we can get rid of it. So we need to multiply that by 2 and by 3 squared. So we have 3 cubed, which is 27. So we need to multiply by this. Um, 3 cubed, which is 27, times 2 cubed, which is 8. And 27 times 8 is 216. If we take the cubed root of that, we get 6. Isn't that a nice pretty number now? Okay, so whatever we need to, um, and then also y. So we need to multiply by 2 times 3 squared in order to get our 12 to become a perfect cube. We need to also multiply by y to make y be a perfect cube. And we also have to multiply by z squared to make z squared a perfect cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, let's see, 3 squared is 9 and 9 times 2 is 18. So we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom, 5x squared times 18yz squared over 12y squared z times 18yz squared. So what we're really doing is we're multiplying by 1, so we're not changing the number, we're just changing the form of the number. Okay, so we're going to do the bottom really quick. Um, I'm going to write this as a separate one. So we already did up here, the cubed root of 216 is 6. So we have 6, and then we made y cubed and z cubed, so now we have 6yz on the bottom. So we already reduced that one. And then we just have to take and multiply our numerator. So 5 times 18 is 90. This is still under the root, 90. x squared, not multiplied by anything. y, z squared, not multiplied by anything. Um, and we can't simplify. Can we simplify the cube root of 90? No, we can't. So our answer is a cube root of 90, x squared, y, z squared, over 6, y, z. Which one of these, um, yeah, which one of these matches that same answer? Well, that would be letter A. And there's more of the work. There you go. And we're done. So rationalizing the denominator is just making it so that all of the um, numbers and the factors and the, um, and the variables in the denominator all have the power of whatever your root is. So you're multiplying by whatever makes those perfect roots. All right, so we're done. Your homework is 5-2, and I hope you have a great day.